As parents, we all want our kids to be successful, right? But what happens when the kids take excelling to the extreme? Perfectionist children, well, they can be tough sometimes. Julie Friedman Smith here this morning from Parenting Power with your thoughts. And this can be tough. Yeah. This can be tough because yeah. kids might get a little frustrated. They might get a little worked up about it. Well, I think the little is the is yeah. not actually very true. Okay. Sometimes it's when kids are, yeah. uh, you know, really attending to detail or really scared to make a mistake, it's not just a little workup. We can all handle that as parents. It's when we see our kids getting really mad or really upset or throwing the book across the yeah, room or yeah. whatever it is, or not even trying. So, you know, if like some, totally some kids just they it. step away from their work, they can't even begin because they're so scared that whatever they put down isn't going to work. Okay. Now, so. how, now how can we? Uh, work with the kids because they still obviously have to get their work yeah. done. But how, like, how do you kind of work with that? Well, I think it's so hard for parents to see our kids upset. You know, ideally we would take away all of their sadness. Of and, course. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't help them because that doesn't help them to learn how to manage these big emotions that are coming their way. And that's really our job as parents is to stay calm and to support our kids in learning strategies to manage these big emotions that are coming. Yeah, to kind of coach them because it's coming in life no matter what. That's right. right. Yeah. Because if every time a child uh, throws a fit about something like this and we say oh it's okay you don't have to do it uh, then really they're learning that by behaving that way they can control their situation uh -huh. and they suck us in for attention and so it almost becomes more of a habit than a feeling okay so part of it is getting really clear as parents how you are going to respond in the heat of the moment when a child is like that and then the second part is working on strategies to help them manage to help them find the courage to make mistakes okay so whether that's piano practice or math or writing, whatever it is, in, so we can certainly acknowledge the feelings. Wow, you're feeling overwhelmed by this. It seems like you might be frightened to make a mistake. And then talk about uh, how do you find the courage. So setting up a plan uh, for making, can you find the courage to make three mistakes sure. today? And also making things far more fact-oriented than feeling-oriented. So if it's about piano practice, instead of talking about uh, all of the emotions. When you're making the plan, say, we're going to practice each piece five times. Actually, you're going to practice each piece five <laughs> times because me as the mom, I'm not doing it. Uh, you know, we're going to practice each piece five times and you might make a checklist and they just check it off. So one, two, three, one, two, four, three, four, five. Yeah. So whether you make a mistake or not, you're still going to get through this five thing. And so sure. make it very concrete and a little less emotional to teach them that they can manage. Yeah, what does that do when they're able to check off, you know, each piece three times, five times, or whatever the goal is set for that day? What does that do for the kids? Well, a few things. Depending on how old or young they are, if they're young, Younger, kind of in that three to nine range, mm -hmm. then having something really concrete helps them to get a grasp because feelings are abstract and they want to have control over something. So yes, I can go through this and I can check this off. That's one way. It gives them some control and power. And the other thing is that as they start to do it, they learn that they can manage that. They can make mistakes and be okay. Mm -hmm. Typically, this um, this emotion comes about because it's often in firstborn children okay. and it's because when they were around we didn't have anything to distract us and so every time they drooled oh, look at your perfect drool oh you're such a good drooler you did that so well and so they have learned that their value their worth is in doing something right perfectly so yeah. when you, when they're scared that they might not do it right they don't even want to do it because we might not love them anymore. sure sure and you know what lots of kids have these feelings and it doesn't get to a point where that you need to go to psychologist or something like that it's about us working with them to teach them how to manage okay. if it's something that is stopping their daily functioning or the house's daily functioning then yes it's time to go and talk some to someone and get help. some help yeah. yeah okay great good stuff I mean Julie Friedman Swiss from Parenting Power if people have more questions where can they find you guys they can find us on Facebook Parenting yeah. Power or ParentingPower.ca.ca there you go good advice Julie thanks good advice